Father, we come to you again. There's midweek service here. We just want to give you the praise and glory and just pray that this service will bless you and honor you and just uh, pray that you be with your servant tonight. Just give me the words that just need to be said. Father, we want to continue to pray for our nation. Just pray for our leaders that they'll turn to you and do things according to your word. Father, we also want to continue to remember the uh, Edna Red family and pray for Paula's cousins and, and uh, for uh, Teddy's daughter and her son and just uh, David's friend there. Just be with him and comfort him, Robert. And just, Father, each and every one that you know that needs your healing touch, be with them all. And Father, we just ask your blessings on the service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight, we're going to be uh, continuing our series on Genesis chapters 1 through 11, and this is part 22. We left off last week, look, we started going over Genesis chapter 7, verse 20. So I want to read that again. You know, we're not going to cover everything again, but I want to just, so we kind of know what we're talking about. But let's turn to uh, Genesis chapter 7, and verse 20. Fifteen cubits upward did the waters prevail, and the mountains were covered. Now, I told you that that was about, you know, the 15 cubits is equal to about 25.75 feet, or, you know, 25 and three-quarter feet of water above the highest mountain peak. And I told you that I, I believe that that was, you know, the draft of the ark was probably close to that. You know, it's probably just a little bit less. You know, that way would allow it to have floated over the mountains. If it was, you know, not above that, then it would have been crashing into them. And, you know, I kind of also mentioned how they had found marine fossils on top of Mount Everest, you know, which is the tallest mountain in the world. So, again, you know, how do you have marine fossils on top of a mountain if the world wasn't covered by water? You know, I mean, they, they can never explain any of these kind of things. And I, I mentioned about, like, how the the Grand Canyon was formed very quickly rather than, um, you know, and so forth, and how the mini Grand Canyon was formed after the Mount St. Helens eruption and so forth. But moving on from there, I want to touch some more things on dealing with this and showing how, you know, things are related to how the water was clearly covering the entire earth. It's not a local flood or anything. I mean, it's clear here. When it was 15 cubits above the mountains, you know, and as I said, when the tallest mountain has, has rain fossils on them, I mean, clearly this was not a local flood. But these same people who deny a global flood here on Earth, even though approximately about 71% of the Earth is still covered by water, say there was a global flood on Venus and Mars, which contain no water today except for very small amounts frozen on Mars, which most of that you know, is actually carbon uh, dioxide, but there is small amounts of frozen water. And then there's small trace amounts in its thin atmosphere. You know, that's, they're such fools. I mean, it, it just shows you how people are so controlled by Satan that the thing is they know the facts, just that they don't want to admit it because if they admit that there was, you know, a flood, then you have to admit that by the, you know, scripture is, is true. There is a God. He's going to punish people for their sins and so forth. You know that. You know that's why they have to deny it no matter what. Even if no matter how stupid they look, they have to continue to deny it because if they do, then you know if they deny that there really was this this uh, global flood, then you have to admit that there is a God that punishes us. But still, the scientists or archaeologists go out west up on the mountains and they find. Oh, I know. Well, that's what I said. They, they're the ones that found these marine fossils and yeah. so forth. But, you know, it's like everything else. They, they'll they come up with some other stupid excuse of how that ended up there. You know, yeah. some Martians picked it up out of the, uh, the ocean and threw it up there. Something. I mean, you know, it's just it's the stupidest things that, you know, like Scripture says, most scientists today, and I'm not all of them, there are some good Christian scientists, but, I mean, vast majority of them are just dumb and stupid. They're like the Bible says. They're uh, science falsely called. You know, that they're, they're um, it, it's just, it's nonsense. Just like this whole thing with this COVID stuff. It is false science. But 
Anyway, it is true that most likely in the past, both of these planets did have global floods as well, but to deny the Earth never had one when we still we are still mostly covered with water and they virtually have none is absurd. Now there's there's if you actually study those other planets, it does look like at one time they did actually have a global flood. For the same reason you can see some of the evidence here on Earth. And you know there's various reasons why you know there's probably no water there and so forth now. But to sit here and say that when they don't have any water and they had a global flood, that you'll say that you have no problem accepting that, but you can't accept the fact that we have one and you know, close to three quarters of the earth is still covered with water, you know, and some of that water is extremely deep, you know, over 35,000 feet is, uh, I think, the, down in the Ray Adams Trench. But like I said, they just hate God so much, they deny the obvious, even when it makes them look foolish. They also say the surface of Mars and Venus are young due to less craters than expected and from volcanic activity. Now both Mars and Venus did have great volcanic activity in the past. And Mars actually has taller extinct volcanoes than Earth does. You know, both those planets actually have giant volcanoes on them that, that are extinct and so forth. You know, Earth is not the only planet that, is, that you know, has volcanoes. You know, I mentioned before how there are still some planets that have what they call the cryovolcanoes, and there's actually one planet, uh, it's one of the satellites of Saturn, I mean, of uh, Jupiter, rather, Io, that it actually still uh, erupts volcanoes similar to what we have here on Earth with the, the uh, lava and, and stuff, and theirs are actually far more active than anything even here on Earth. So, you know, to, you know it's not, it's not that... There is another activity on, on other planets, is what I'm, I guess what I'm trying to get at. But the, those, the scientists will say that Mars and Venus are young due to their less craters because of all this volcanic activity, but there's still no, but those volcanoes are all extinct. But yeah, we still have them active here on Earth, and then they'll try to tell, tell but no Earth, you know, we're, you know, billions of years old. I mean, again, it's just the stupidity of these scientists, the stuff they come up with, it, 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 it's just beyond logic. You know, I can't call them anything up but fools. But both Mars and Venus, as I said, did, or I mentioned about how they have the, the volcanoes. But Mars also has a canyon that's called Valles Marianaris that is twice the size of our Grand Canyon, again confirming a global flood. So, you know, again, and, you know, there are things on Mars and Venus that shows that if there's possible, you know, there, they did have a global flood. But as I said, how can you sit there and say that, but then you deny it here on Earth? You know, they say these planet surfaces are young when they have no active volcanoes or any water at the present to resurface the ground. Yet they say, as I said, Earth's surface is old, you know, billions of years old, when we have much water and many active volcanoes. You know, because just the water alone, with the Earth being covered with all this water, water causes constant erosion and so forth. You know, you can... Even just, you know, when you get a big flood comes through here, a big, or a big rain, when you have it all rushing through, you know, it starts eroding things and washing things away. So, you know, the water's going to constantly be keeping it, keeping it resurfaced. But yet, those, as I said, I'm saying that we're young. I mean, we're old, but these other ones that don't have it are young. I mean, <laughs> the volcanoes are most likely a glimpse from God of hell and the burning sulfur found in hell as can be seen in the molten lava ejected from volcanoes. Remember, hell is located in the center or heart of the earth. You know, there's many places that talk about that. You know, Jesus himself went to the center of the earth, the heart of the earth. And, you know, hell is located in the center of the earth. And I think this is kind of a small little glimpse that God lets us kind of get of what hell is like down there. You know, you got these volcanoes with this hot lava and stuff coming up. And they'll be living in it. Exactly. I mean, they, you know, remember, they do call, you know, the eternal, you know, hell gets thrown into the lake of fire. And it's called the lake of fire for a reason. You know, it's, it's basically floating fire and lava and so forth. I mean, but people, they still just don't want to believe it. But they will one day. 
But as I said, most likely the global floods on Mars and Venus also occurred at the time of a global flood here on Earth. God may have been not only ridding the Earth of pollution at this time, but all of his creation. So I think, you know, if they did actually have a global flood, most likely it was at the same time as the one here on Earth. That, remember, all of creation was cursed due to Adam's sin. I've read that to you before. And, you know, this might have been God's way of, in one sense, kind of cleaning up everything all at once and stuff like that. So, but, you know, Scripture doesn't really give us any details on that. But now some people believe there was a global flood between Genesis 1-1 and 1-2. Many of the people who believe in the gap theory believe this. This flood is known as the Luciferian flood or Lucifer's flood. The belief is that God created a perfect world in Genesis 1-1 millions or billions of years before he recreated the world as seen in Genesis 1-2 and the rest of chapter 1. You know, I preached on that in the Gap Theory before one time in a sermon. And, um, you know, so I'm not going to get into too much detail, but, you know, basically, as I said, they're, 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 these people believe that during this, there's this gap here because, you know, God had to re, so-called re, restore, recreate the earth again because of this uh, so-called Lucifer flood. You know, they believe that Lucifer was down here ruling. But as I said, they, they believe Lucifer ruled over the earth and a pre-Adamic people that supposedly had no souls. Now again, it's completely unscriptural and so forth like that. that you know, as I said, don't go and believe something like this that it's not even found in scripture, but then they won't believe the facts that are found in it. But, you know, why would God create people with no souls? You know, they believe Lucifer rebelled against God and became Satan. And it was at this time that God destroyed the earth with a global flood and then recreated the earth and gave dominion to Adam rather than Lucifer and control of the, of the earth. You know, after this so-called Luciferian flood, this is supposedly when the earth became without form and void and the whole earth was covered with water. You know, they say that all of the plant, animal, people fossils that are found from the Lucifer flood and not the Genesis flood of Noah, and that none of these people, plants, or animals are related to any of today. You know, they they try to say that all like all these so-called dinosaur bones we find, they're actually from the Lucifer flood, not from the Genesis flood. Mm -hmm. And they, those never were around, you know, all those things that were around at that time were all different and nothing's related to anything that's around today. You know, again, well then how do you explain Dinosaur footprints next to with man's footprints, and how do you explain cave drawings of people? They have made drawings of dinosaurs if they were never around and they didn't even ever see their bones. And stuff. I mean, it's just like I said, they, people they just don't think. I mean, seriously, I, I don't mean to mock people, but sometimes they're just so stinking stupid you can't help it. I mean, seriously, they're just so foolish this, that uh, that they're just idiots. I mean, it's just stupid. But uh. Anyway, then, um, let's see. You know, as I said, they believe Lucifer rebelled against God and became Satan. And as I said, it was at this time that God destroyed the earth with the global flood. And as I said, then they ended up giving, you know, the dominion ended up going to uh, Adam and so forth. And But the, uh, the believers of the Lucifer flood say the dinosaurs died out in this flood, not in Noah's day. You know, how could that flood cause fossils but not the Genesis flood. If the fossils came from Lucifer's flood, they most likely would have then been destroyed in Noah's flood due to the earthquakes, volcanic activity, and the flood waters themselves. You know, I talked about how violent it was. You know, if all these fossils supposedly came from Lucifer's flood and not you know Genesis flood or Noah's flood, they would have all been destroyed. I mean, you know, and again, why would that flood create fossils but yet the flood of Genesis not create fossils. I mean, it just, you know, it, it just doesn't even make any sense. You know, many fossils have been found with deformities and disease, which would not be evident if they were from the supposed Lucifer flood, 
as sin was supposedly not there until Lucifer rebelled against God. Sin caused disease and deformities which never existed prior to sin. Believers of, believers of the Lucifer flood say the angels that sinned in 2 Peter 2 4 refer to the angels that sinned with Satan and led to the Lucifer flood. You know, I've already shown how those angels referred to in 2 Peter 2 4 refer to the angels that made it with the women and produced the giants as seen in Genesis 6 2 and 4. So, I mean, again, it's just another way, too, that people want to, you know, believe in the, the false Seth Cain theory and stuff, and again, they want to try to justify it by, well, those angels that talk about Second Peter, that was from the Lucifer flood. I mean, people, they just come up with all this stuff that is not in Scripture whatsoever. And, you know, they'll do anything to try to protect, you know, twist Scripture so that they can get it to match their bizarre, you know, thinking. But this whole belief of a Lucifer flood, as I said, is completely unscriptural. There's they have absolutely no evidence to back any of this up and must twist scripture and to even make an attempt of legitimacy. I mean, you have to, there, there's no, no evidence in, out there in nature and there's no evidence in scripture. You know, you think if this happened, God wouldn't have mentioned it, even just one verse, you know, something. I mean, you know, God would have said, and I had to reform it because of Luke's first flood. Period. Just added to that. Something. You know what I mean? It's like God would have made at least some kind of a comment. And then again, why would you have, you know, what happened to all these people then that died? You know, they didn't have any souls. You know, how, again, how can you be a person? You know, and, and so forth. And, you know, where, where did they get life? And, you know, not in that, but we're going to see that earth was made for man, not for Satan or Lucifer, you know? Uh, let's see. But as I already have shown earlier in our study of Genesis 1, how Satan as Lucifer was created during the six days of creation and how the earth is less than 6,000 years old. You know, I've already told you that, you know, everything was made in those six days. Well, everything would have to include Lucifer. So, number one, how could he have been here, had all this time, you know, because again, it's just another way to justify having an earth billions of years old that... You could say, you know, that well, Lucifer was down here for all this time and had all these people and animals and all this stuff, and then he finally decided, well, I'm tired, I'm going to rebel, and so forth. And you know, again, it's just it's just totally unscriptural. You know, God says he got kicked out of heaven; he wasn't down here on earth, and so forth. I mean, they, like I said, they just have absolutely nothing to back this up other than their bizarre, crazy minds. But uh, let's see here. But scripture clearly says Adam was the first man. So no pre-Adamic people. And why would God not save some animals from this time period or any people when he did in Noah's day? I mean, why would he, in Noah's day, he took two of each kind of animal or seven of some. And then he, you know, some people got saved. But yet during this time, not one single person, not one single animal or plant or nothing, you know, got saved. I mean... Again, it's just that doesn't make any sense. You know, and, and if, there, you know, sin didn't come around until after Adam sinned, I mean, even after Lucifer sinned, you know, when he became Satan, that's not what brought around the sin in the world. It was, it was Adam when he sinned. You know, that's what cursed the whole creation. It wasn't even when Lucifer, you know, when Lucifer became Satan. You know, Scripture... Scripture says sin came from Adam and, and there was no death prior to his sin. So then why did God destroy all life before Adam if there was no sin or death prior to Adam? Let's look this up. Look at turn to Romans chapter 5 verse 12. Romans chapter 5 verse 12. Okay, Romans chapter 5, verse 12. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. I mean, you see several things in this verse that 
Sin came in this world because of one man, not because of an angel, which, you know, Lucifer is a cherub. I've already told you that. It's a type of angel. It says that death didn't come about until you had sin. And then death passed upon all men so that all have, you know, sin. You know, so we see that death passed along. But uh, scripture says sin causes death, so there could not have been death before Adam. You know, we, we know uh, Romans 6.23, but we'll turn there. You guys can, I'm sure you all know it, but we'll turn there. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. It's part of the Roman road. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, if sin was here before Adam, then there was no point for Jesus to have become a man and, and have died for our sins. Now, Scripture says the earth was made by God to be inhabited by man, not angels like Lucifer. We can see that in Isaiah chapter 45, verse 18. If you want to turn there, Isaiah chapter 45, verse 18. There's other places that you can find stuff, but Isaiah chapter 45, verse 18. For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it, he hath established it, he created it not in vain, he formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord, and there is none else. You know, and the thing is, it, you know, it was created to be in heaven. So number one, he wouldn't have left it just buried for this big gap of time in between, which depending on, as I mentioned in my sermon before on the gap theory, some say that could be millions of years, some say, I mean, you know, they don't even agree on that, but I mean, you know, it could be this long length of time. Some even say, you know, millions of years. So, you know, God wouldn't have left it vacant, number one, because he says he made it to be in heaven. Number two, then, if you go back and look at, you know, we studied in Genesis chapters 1 and 2, then you see that man, you know, Adam being that first man, was created on day 6. So, you know, for five days, you know, while God was still forming the earth and creating it and so forth, you know, the man wasn't here. But other than that, you know, there was no, there was no big time. You know, man's been here from the beginning. You know, Jesus said that in other places, like we're talking about marriage. Then, you know, he said that, you know, man had been here from the beginning. Well, if this Lucifer flood and all this stuff had happened before, then man would not have been here from the beginning. So, again, now they're calling Jesus a liar. You know, I mean, it's just by, when you start believing in a lot of these false things like this, then you have to twist and change a lot of other scripture and cause a lot of other things to happen to get to get your, you know, your way. But in fact, man will stay on earth when God creates the new earth. You know, I said it was created and made for man and to be inhabited. Well, man will still stay here on earth when we get the new earth. You know, angels live in heaven. That's, you know, angels, heaven was made for the angels. You know, uh, the earth is made for man. You know, when we get to heaven and new earth, the new Jerusalem will come down from heaven and will come down here to earth. And then we will live here on earth. Now, like right now, if you were to die, until that time, you will temporarily be up in heaven. But until, you know, that, it's just a temporary thing. After that, when we get the new earth, man will still again, once again, he'll be living down here on earth. Now, that doesn't mean you're going to go and visit heaven, but you will be down here on earth. You know, that, that you know, Jesus will be down here with us, but... You know, the earth is made for man, and, and angels, their, their place is up in heaven. You know, Jesus said that Satan was a murderer from the beginning. Turn to John chapter 8, verse 44. John chapter 8, verse 44. <clears throat> 
John chapter 8, verse 44. Okay, John chapter 8, verse 44. This is Jesus speaking here. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar, and the father of it. You know, uh, Satan has been lying right from the beginning. That's why, you know, people need to understand scripture because, you know, I told you before how that flat earth theory is all coming back again and all, you know, another one of these bizarre things and all this kind of stuff. And, and you know, just those are lies from Satan. And people, the sad thing is there's a lot of Christians that are buying into all this stuff. You know, I, it, it just amazes me that how willingly ignorant that most Christians are because they just won't read their, their, their scripture. They won't read Bible, their, their Holy Bible. And all they know is just what somebody tells you. That's why I try to give you guys scripture. And I tell you, go home and study and read. Don't just listen to what I have to say and then that's it, you know. Check on what I have to say and so forth, you know, things like that. Because, you know, that's how people get deceived. And, you know, that's why they get into these cults and just... All this other stuff, but well, like I said, Satan has been a liar from the beginning. But now, this verse most likely speaks of Cain under the influence of Satan committing the first murder. Though it is possible that it refers to Satan bringing sin into God's creation when he rebelled, and then got Adam and Eve to sin, and <laughs> sin brings death. Therefore, all death is on the hands of Satan. You know, I mean, so really, it could be either way. You could, it could be literally that first murder, or the sense that by his rebellion, that he he got Adam and Eve to sin, which then you know brought death on everybody. You know, sin to the whole world. So either way you want to look at it, then and then of course we know how evil man can be with sin. I mean, all you got to do is turn on the evening news and you see stuff. So. Um, you know, they don't need help from Satan. They're, they're just wicked enough themselves. But, it, you know, in one sense, all of this death that's ever happened from the beginning is all on the hands of Satan. Because if he had never rebelled himself against God and then never had Adam and Eve sin, we would have never had all of what's going on. But either way, from the very beginning, he, he's, I mean, he, you know, right off the bat, what did he do? He lied to Eve. You know, very first thing, you know, the, every the very first words ever in Scripture mentioned from Satan, he's already lying. You know, just like Jesus said, he was a liar from the beginning. You know, it's like some politicians, every word out of the mouth is a lie. They, don't, they, can't, they can't say anything without lying. But, uh, let's see. Now, if Satan was here in a pre-Edemic world, then what does this verse refer to as Satan? Then if Lucifer was obedient in the beginning for a long time, while supposedly ruling the earth and the pre-Adamic people. So I you know what I'm saying is, you know, they claim that Lucifer was here for all this time and all this stuff and ruling all these people and all this kind of stuff before his rebellion. Well, it says he was a liar from the beginning. When God created Lucifer as Lucifer, that he was not a sinful being yet. You know, it was later on he rebelled, and that's when it became Satan. So again, you know, it just how do they just, you know, what, what does this first mean? That I mean, they can't ever answer some of these things. You know, I mentioned how the gap theory, a lot of times they'll say, well, there's this big gap, but then they'll say, oh, well, then the, the six days, well, then literal 24-hour days. It's like, well, how do you have these millions and billions of years, and then all of a sudden now we never go down to 24-hour days? I mean, it's just, again, they're trying to twist scripture to fit these things and then there's so many verses you could find that they have no answer for them. It's just like with the Seth Cain theory when I mentioned it with the Giants. You know, you could bring up these verses and they'll always try to twist something, but it's very simple. When you have the truth, they all make sense. But when you start trying to twist it to your you know false idea, then all these other verses you can't you don't ever have an answer for them. And that's what happens here with the people that believe in this Lucifer flood. Now, there is much scripture dealing with the Noahic flood 
so as I mentioned before, why is there not even one single verse that speaks of the so-called Luciferian flood? You know, once again, people just do not want to believe God's word as found in the King James Bible. You cannot believe in the Lucifer flood and a literal interpretation of scripture and believe God's word. You know, you can't have it both ways. You know, and, and, and you know, I mentioned that before how, you know, even recent polls have shown how many people really don't believe in the inerrancy of the Bible. They don't truly believe in, in uh, scripture and so forth. And... You know, they just, they just, you know, I mean, you, you, you can go to some of these Catholic Bibles and, and their footnotes and stuff like that. They'll flat out tell you that a lot of this stuff is like fairy tales and things like that and so forth. You know, but then there's supposed to be the Christian church of the world. You know, that's what I'm telling you. If people would just pay attention, listen to their own false words, you'll see how evil a lot of these things are and how far from being Christian a lot of things are. You know, there's a lot of people, like I said, that confess to be Christians, but Jesus is going to say on that day, you know, depart from me, I never knew you. You know, there, a, lot, a lot of people are going to hear that, a lot more than what they think. But many people who deny a global flood insist the flood mentioned in Genesis was just a local flood. If this was the case, then God is a liar, which we all know he is not. There have been many local floods around the world since that time, including many local floods even right here in our area, so God would have lied many times. I mean, look in the last 10 years, you know, we've had basically four major floods. And, uh, you know, that's just, that's just right here. That's not even including the rest of the world. So, you know, if that was the case, then God would be a liar, you know. You know and God promised Noah that he would never flood the entire earth again and destroy it by a global flood and left the rainbow to show his promise. If you would, skip ahead to Genesis chapter 9, verse 11. Genesis chapter 9, verse 11. In Genesis chapter 9, verse 11. And I will establish my covenant with you, neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood, neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. I mean, again, even look at that. It says, a flood to destroy the earth. A local flood does not destroy the earth. You know, I mean, it, again, you know, people, if it's either you believe scripture or you don't. And the thing is, when people start, you know, that's one reason why I wanted to do this study. Because there's so many things in just these first 11 chapters that if you don't believe them, you cannot truly and honestly believe that Jesus came here to die for our sins. Because when you start adding all these things like the millions and billions of years and sin prior to, to, the, the, to Adam's sin, you know, and death and so forth, uh, all these animals and people and, you know, false things like this and just all these different things, you cannot truly believe in Scripture because there's no point in Jesus coming if, if all that stuff happened. But God never said there would not be any local floods. Also, if it was a local flood... There would have been no reason for Noah to have built an ark, let alone one that big, or to bring any animals on board. You know, I mentioned how, you know, this was the largest boat, ship, whatever out there until, I can't remember now, I think it was like the 1800s or something like that or whatever. I mean, it was a long time, you know, that, that at least that we know of anyway. So, I mean, why would you build something that large and then it was just going to be a local flood? I mean, that'd be like us just building some big thing out here in the parking lot or something and then, oh, as soon as it goes away, well, now we got a big, you know, traction, I guess, to bring people to get some money or something. So, I don't know. But, but the people and animals could have just moved away from the flood waters just as is seen today. You know, whenever we have a local flood, the animals, they just get up and move. They don't have to be thrown on an ark and do all this kind of stuff. I mean, it had been the same thing then. You know, they would just move somewhere else. You know, plus it still goes back to the same thing again. How do you have marine animals on the top of the highest mountain? You know, how do you explain Grand Canyon? How do you explain the layers of the earth? How do you explain? I mean, you know, I mean, there's so many things that you can never explain by just a local flood. And the very large size of the ark shows it was a global flood because even if people wanted to argue that Noah would have to build one and bring animals on board, 
it would still be many fewer animals, as many animals are only found in certain areas of the earth. I mean, for example, if we're going to have a big local flood here, we don't need to put elephants on it and giraffes and rhinoceroses and hippopotamus, all those things, you know, like in Africa and things like that. We don't have any of that stuff here. So we would just have, a, it would it'd be a smaller ark because all those type of animals are, don't live around here. You don't have to have it for the animals that live in that local area. But God destroyed the earth with a global flood in the days of Noah. Again, it was not a local flood. This was a global flood. The next God... Uh, God next destroys the earth... Uh, oh, the next time that God destroys the earth, it would not be with a flood, but rather by fire. If you would, turn to 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 10 through 12. 2 Peter chapter 3, 10 through 12. You know, God keeps his promise. He's not going to destroy the earth again with the flood. This next time, he's going to destroy it by fire. And we know that fire is representative of cleansing things. You know, that's one reason why, you know, what says they're down and burning in hell. But they can never get cleansed down there. But 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 10 through 12. After James, 1 Peter, 2 Peter, 1 John. 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 10 through 12. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. I mean, we see here that when God, the next time when he destroys it, he's literally going to destroy it. Even the elements will melt. You know, and, and the only thing that can do that kind of stuff like we have right now is a nuclear bomb. Can basically, you know, it can vaporize people and so forth, you know, if you're too close to one. You know, and just totally obliterate things. But when God does it, he's going to literally cleanse everything. You know, and that's when we'll get the new heaven and the new earth. And, you know, that's why even he cleanses heaven, because, you know, Satan's up there even to this day. And, you know, we, his just pollution, just the smell of him just being there, you know, he needs, it needs to be all cleansed. But, you know, I mentioned, though, like I said, fire is a cleansing agent, basically, is what it, you know, what it does, it purifies things and so forth. You know, it's kind of like when you put silver in, in, uh, the smolder or whatever they call that, you know, where you melt it and then you try to get all the impurities off it and so forth, but you know, all that heat and stuff, the fire, and it purifies things. But just as the global flood formed the many fossils we see today, the coal and oil we have was formed during the flood. So again, I, I want to, before I get into something, all these people that, that, uh, Yeah, we'll get into it in a minute, but, but coal and oil, like I said, was formed during the flood. Well, I, I think I got it in here, but, you know, I'm just tired of these idiots in this world. But uh, coal was formed by all of the plants destroyed during the flood. The earth had many more forests and plants at the time of the flood as more of the surface was land. You know, vast numbers of plants were destroyed. And coal was formed by the plants forming layers known as peat, which were compressed by great pressure and heat as the water was heated up by the volcanoes erupting. The coal is found in layers or beds in various thicknesses, depending on how many plants were there at the time of formation. And there were many different types of plants found then that are no longer around. You know, some plants have survived, and then there's other types that are no longer exist, but it has nothing to do with Lucifer and flood, it's just 
you know, for various reasons. There's been plants in our own lifetime that have gone extinct for whatever reason. So, but many people say we could never have all the coal we have today from just the flood, but that it would take millions of years worth of plants and time to form all the coal we see today. But I've already shown how the earth consisted of much more plant life than we have today and how the flood could quickly compress all these plants and quickly form coal. You know, today there are trillions upon trillions of tons of coal all over the world, all over the earth, including a lot in West Virginia, but our idiot president wants to shut them down so those people are all going to starve to death. But I guess he don't care about them. But God provided the coal for us to use as he knew we would need it for our modern technology along with oil. So all these liberals, they want to tell us that we, it's, it's a bad thing to have coal and, and oil. They're just a bunch of fools. God gave it to us during the flood. He created it so that we could use it with our modern technology. It is not causing this false climate change, global warming, whatever nonsense they want to come up with. That's just a thing from hell and from Satan. It's a lie from Satan. It's not true. So, um, you know, as I said, for all those liberal think green, save the earth nuts, we have plenty of coal that God has provided for us, and using them will not hurt the earth. You know, so that's why when you have a big oil spill, it spills on the ground where you think it came from. It came from the ground. So don't panic over it, okay, people? You know, take a chill pill. But many coal layers have had bells and other man-made objects found in them, as well as sometimes animal fossils. These things are again easily explained by the global flood as the turbulent, swirling water would mix animal remains in with plant remains and the pre-Diluvian people's belongings would also mix in with the plants as they float by and get hung up in them. And these objects also prove that pre-flood people were not so primitive as many people think. You know, there, there's actual pictures of them. You can see some of them. You know, some of those uh, DVDs, seminar series that I mentioned about the, uh, Ken, Dr. Ken Hoven, where he's got the creation seminar series. He's got actually some pictures and things in there. You can find them elsewhere. Of bells within layers of coal. Well, if, you know, they... Your fake scientists all sit here and say, well, it took millions and years and all that stuff for the, the layers to form. Well, if that did, how do you get a, a, a metal bell inside them? You know, again, that was there because people had, you know, everybody thinks we're the only ones that are smart to come up with this technology. You know, people back then were actually smarter than we are. And they had technology that we only, like, rediscovered recently. And, you know, this is an example of something what was actually survived from prior to the flood. And it was in these layers. But we're going to stop there. We'll, we'll kick, pick up with oil and some of that stuff um, next week. Um, yeah, I think we'll go ahead and stop there for the night. But, you know, like I said, people that want to panic, you know, they try to tell us we got to go to wind power, which is totally stupid, stu stupidity and idiotic and everything else. If they really are concerned about the environment, go to nuclear power. But... They don't really care about the environment, but that's why they're anti-nuclear. But anyway, we're going to stop there for the night, and then we'll have a we have a word of prayer and be, be dismissed. Father, again, we come to you tonight. We thank you for this time here to just study your word here in Genesis. We just uh, pray, Lord, that people would start reading what Scripture has to say, and just take it for what it says, Lord, and not add to it and add their false, like, ideas such as the Luciferian flood and some of this other stuff and just realize that the earth was a global flood and not just some local flood or something else that the anti-God people just want to come up with. And Lord, even the so many Christians are being deceived by Satan today that it's just, it, it's just sad. And Father, we just pray that their eyes might be opened up. And Father, we pray for safety for each and every one here tonight as they, as they leave here from this service. And just return again on Sunday for the Sunday school and the rest of the services. And Father, we just uh, thank you for what your son did for us on Calvary. And we just ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.